Biden's, hardly at all, inflation is crippling U.S. economy. As if to emphasize that this river town of 1,200 has zero in common with the royalty that once ruled at the eponymous location outside Paris, royalty far removed from the concerns and the despair of its people, this Yakagani river town is pronounced in its own unique Appalachian way, beer sales. That pronunciation also holds true for the towns of Versailles, Kentucky, as well as Versailles, Ohio. It has to do with the choppy way the early Scots settlers in all three of these towns tended to emphasize second syllables over the first. But one can imagine it also had a little bit to do with not having anything in common with the palace that, for centuries, symbolized a ruling class deeply out of sync with the rest of its nation. The Versailles in Ohio is a charming and thriving little historic village. The one in Kentucky's bourbon country is the epicenter of American horse breeding, and it has had robust population growth for 100 consecutive years. Last week, Joe Biden showed what it looks like when the ruling class loses all connection with the realities of the pain and stress of the people it serves. His White House shindig to celebrate his own economic accomplishments was an orgy of self-back padding and bragging over the Inflation Reduction Act. Experts agree that it won't reduce inflation, and there was a bit of irony to the fact that stocks plunged, and with them many ordinary people's retirement savings, over terrible inflation news even as Biden was speaking. The new inflation data showed a deeply troubling increase. Core inflation was 6.3% in August, up from 5.9% in July. The Dow plunged a staggering 1,200 points on the news that inflation had only barely slowed down to 8.3%. The future of America's bright and the promise of America is real. It is real, Biden shouted, counting on the strength of his own assertion to overpower the reality. It is not lost on average voters, for Biden or for Trump, that this administration is wildly out of touch with the crippling effects that inflation is having on their lives. Eggs are 40% more expensive than a year ago, coffee 18%, groceries generally 11%. You don't have to be a Republican to be unhappy with that. Biden's tone deafness continued the following day, which was spent in Michigan, lecturing people whose median income is $36,842 that they ought to buy an electric car to save money. In much of the Detroit area, the $62,900 Cadillac Lyrique EV that Biden drove as a stunt at his publicity event costs more than a three-bedroom, two-bath home with a detached garage. Hours later, Biden traveled to Delaware to vote in his home state's primary, using a taxpayer-funded jet and motorcade to vote in person rather than casting an absentee ballot, as Presidents Barack Obama and Donald Trump had done when they were in office. It costs over $2,500 per minute to transport a sitting U.S. president. All of this happened just two weeks after Biden had announced college loan forgiveness, a transfer of funds to the most privileged people in the nation with the brightest prospects at the expense of everyone else. He followed that up a week later by standing outside Independence Hall in Philadelphia, draped in sinister red lighting, and delivering one of the most odious speeches a president has ever given, expressing his loathing for half of the people living in this country. For months, Republicans seemed to be in the catbird seat in terms of voters preferring them over Democrats in November's midterm elections. Their advantage may have diminished recently, in large part because of Trump's return to the spotlight and his feud with the Justice Department. Whatever the outcome in November, several things will be missed along the way in measuring the outcome. Even Abraham Lincoln, who had much more solid ground upon which to denounce his political enemies as moral inferiors, was capable of exercising some restraint. If Biden gets a November shellacking, it will not be because he didn't do enough legislatively. It won't be because voters don't personally like him. It will be because Biden has lost touch with the concerns of the common men and women who make things move in this country, the welders, the mechanics, the energy workers and waitresses, the farmers and small business owners, as well as the suburban parents whose grocery, utility and housing bills have skyrocketed while their incomes have remained stagnant. Many such people have told me they voted for Biden just two years ago, but they have little sympathy for him now. They are watching a man dance about and brag about his climate change bill, all the while vilifying them or their family members, heedless of the challenges they face.